Hello viewers, this is Kisi and welcome back to my channel. This is part 4a of my tutorial series working with step 7. And in this part, we will look at how to program forward reverse in OB1. Let's get started. Okay, so first let's look at our circuit. Right. So we have a forward reverse circuit right here. Next we have a power circuit. And then on our right, we have the control circuit. Okay, so let's walk through quickly. With a power circuit, we have a circuit breaker, which is for protection. We have an overload also for protection for the motor. And we have two contactors, one for forward and in the other for reverse. Now, the principle behind forward and reverse is that we have two contactors. One will bring power directly to the motor. If you look at this section, we have line one, line two, line three coming straight through the contactor to the motor. The same line one, line two, line three coming out. But in the second contactor, we realize that we have line one, line two, line three connected to the top side of the contactor. But at the bottom side of the contactor, you see that two of the faces are swapped. So we have line one, line two coming to line three of the motor and then line three going to line two of the motor. Okay, so basically this will cause the motor to run in the reverse direction when the contactor for the reverse picks. So now we will look at our right and then have a look at our control circuit. So the idea is that we need to have an arrangement such that when the operator pushes the forward button, it should be able to latch itself on or hold itself on and then energize the forward contactor. When the forward contactor energizes, the motor will move in the forward direction. When the operator wants to move in the other direction, he needs to press the stop push button and then press the reverse button. Then it will also hold itself on and then the relay, will, sorry, the contactor will also energize and then we'll have the motor moving in the reverse direction. Okay, so with this explanation, we will now move on to our PLC wiring arrangement and then from there we can move to step 7 to write our code. We move on to PLC arrangement. So basically the control circuit that we saw right here will no longer be a hard wire control but rather we'll implement all these controls in our PLC end. So at the PLC end we have a PLC card with all the inputs connected and then the outputs connected as well. So let's look at it quickly. We have our forward button which is wired to address 0, dot 0, the reverse button goes to dot 1, stop moves to dot 2, and then the overload moves to the dot 3. Okay, so in this uh, particular arrangement, we will assume that we have a card before this very card. So which means if we have 8-bit card here, we assume that we have another 16-bit card before this very one. So if we are to count, then we have first 8-bit that is the power by 0, then the 16-bit card we will have byte 1, byte 2, and this is going to be our byte 3 card. So byte 3, byte 4, and then the output will be our byte 5. Alright, so we can see the output also connected to our cross that are going to energize to let the motor move either in the forward or the reverse direction. Alright, so now let's look at some typical application of this particular motor starter arrangement okay so you can have a conveyor where you need to transport items so the conveyor moves in the forward direction to transport the item in one direction and then it can move in the opposite direction to transport another set of items in that particular direction another application will be that a winch where you want to lift things up and down so when you press this forward then the conveyor moves upwards or let's say the lift moves upwards to lift that thing up and then when you press that down it moves downwards to bring the items down okay so with the explanation given we'll move straight to our getting started program and then have a look at uh, how we we'll implement the void reverse in our program so first this time i would like us to put all our symbolic names and then addresses in our symbolic table so we'll go to a seven program and then we can see our symbolic table right here so we double click on the symbolic table it's open for us and then from here you can key in all your inputs and then the symbolic name that you give to your project even before you start so that it makes uh, life easy okay so we'll put the program side by side so i'll bring the drawing that we have 
the and then and i'll bring the symbolic table right here and then we can key in all our symbolic addresses so first we are saying that we are assuming that there is a 16 bit card already here before this very card so this is going to be our byte 0 byte 1 by 2 is a 16 bit card this is going to be by 3 by 4 and then this is by 5 okay so by 3 we know that we are making use of the first one which is our forward so if this is a conveyor we can give it let's say bc01 underscore forward bc01 underscore fw forward and then our input we are going to put uh, input 3.0 and then uh, our comment is going to be this is going to be our forward so forward okay then we go to the next one to be bc01 the same belt underscore this is going to be our reverse Arriving. and then we can put in the address and automatically just a bit of address for us which is 3.1 and this is going to be our reverse okay so we have a bc01 underscore then this is going to be our stop zero and then here is going to comment is going to be stored then we'll have a pc zero one underscore overload is going to be ol and then it's also going to be three point three and then the boot and then here is going to be a overload, overload so basically now we have our input forward reverse stop overload then we can look key in our output as well we give it the symbolic names. So our first output is uh, bc01 underscore command. So that's going to be our first command, command one. But here, we have to change it to output, which is k noted by k. So this is going to be our five zero. So with the red indication that came in the case, and whenever you have a duplicate address, it will let you so that you change it before you cause problem in program. Okay. So this is going to be our forward command and then we have the next one i can pay this if you want to increase it and then paste here it's using the same address so you give me an alarm and this is going to be command two and then i can change here as well one and then this is going to be my reverse command so reverse command okay so we can see that we are done with our symbolic name so basically if you are writing a complex program you can do almost all your input and output work in excel and then after that you can just transfer it to the symbolic table or you can type it directly in the symbolic table so we have the bc01 we have the forward reverse stop overload then uh, the command command one and then the command two for forward reverse. okay so you click on save so I can now come back, maximize this, click on save, and then you are done. We can close this one now, minimize our drawing, and then we go back to our semantic manager. So now the semantic manager go back to blocks, and then I can double click to open the OB1. Now I'm in OB1, I can then create a new network, control R. So first I have to create uh, the first network. This is going to be my forward network. Okay. All right. So from here we can now start in setting our projects. So this is going to be our forward logic. Okay. Okay. So now with our network ready, we will start up with our logic. The first condition is that we need a stop push button where we can stop the forward action. So I will insert a stop push button. But remember, from the previous tutorial what we said about stop they are always normally closed on field so in your program it has to be normally open okay so i come here and then this is going to be my stop input which is i thread of two okay because i've already given it a symbolic address it appears automatically okay then our next is going to be a forward push button and then we have a i dot zero which was forward okay so we have the forward push button and then we were having an overload on the same line that we, that we need to stop our system whenever there is an overload on the motor so i click on this one and i insert our overload network so overload the uh, symbolic name overload was i dot the right after the overload 
so for now we can put this variable and then we can bring our aqua so far about zero now okay so now with all these conditions in place we can analyze and see exactly what we are doing so we see we need a stop push button we need a start we need an overload and then we need a call so we can see that we have the input and get right here the input and get because we need this one this switch to be on and the forward to be on and then the overload to be on before we can get current flowing to the coil which is the q5.0 all right but remember that whenever the stop is on the overload is on and the operator presses the push button this will energize but then when the operator takes his hand off the push button we will lose the command that is going to the output so this brings us back to what we learned the previous one which during our direct online application or implementation is the same thing that we need to do here we need to create a latch that is we need to provide a switch that is going to be parallel to this particular side so that you can hold it on okay so i insert a branch and then you realize that we need the output to be our hold on contact so i'll insert a contact and then this contact is going to be my q file zero and then i can close so basically we have uh, the logic here now we can analyze the logic with respect to our drawing okay so right now we can see that we have a forward button we have the, the hold on contact for it and then we have uh, our stop push button and then our overload before we go to the core now we realize that because the faces to these contactors will be swapped we have to make sure that we don't energize these two contactors at the same time so we need what we term as an interlock between the two side of our control so that we make sure that whenever one contactor is energized the other will not be energized that is the explanation of the next contact that i'll be adding right here so this next contact that i'll add needs to be a contact from our reverse contactor so this is going to be a 5.1 this is a mistake it's supposed to be a normally close contact so 5.1 okay so we have it right here we are done with our forward logic we can now insert a new network and then we can add our reverse logic so we have our reverse logic right here okay so similarly we will do the same we need our stop right here because when we press stop it should affect the reverse as well so we'll put our stop and this is going to be i dot two we need a our reverse that is going to be i one we need an overload as well also here so we need a second overload i three three and then we need uh our interlock well sorry our interlock contact to make sure that whenever the forward is also running the reverse will not be able to run so this is a uh, reverse sorry for it so q5.0 okay and then now we can bring up and this call is going to be our reverse call which is q5.1 okay then this also needs to hold itself on whenever we then we push the reverse push button so i insert and then move to this branch and then here is going to be our q5.1 hold it on okay so basically we've created the two logics that we need to implement our forward and then reverse start time okay now let's analyze our circuit once again so with the reverse we have the stop we have the reverse push button we have our overload and then we have our interlock contacts from the forward contactor and then we have our reverse contactor right here and then we are having our latch which is always parallel to our stats or let's say reverse or forward push button okay so now with this one done we can then click on save and then we can now turn on our plc and then we can simulate this logic that we've created
So I'll come to this section and then turn on the P of C. So many things open, I can close that one in this section. Okay, so right now, when the PLC open, I can now go back to my program and then click on download. I can then come here and then turn on the simulator. Okay, our simulator is running now. We can then go online and then monitor our program. So right now we have a, a forward logic right here and then our reverse. So I open the simulator. I can put it right at this corner so we can monitor. So now we realize that our the byte for our input starts from three. It's byte three, so I have to change this one to three. Okay, change to byte three, and then I come back to this section. I can see that here as well. Our output is also like five so we have to change this three to five and then we are done we can now start the simulation so we already know that stop button are normally closed so we need to check them three dot two three dot two right here and we can see that now the three dot two is closed and then we can see current flowing from this section up to this side of our program so we can see from the circuit okay so now 3.2 is closed, we will now press the start push button which is 3.0 Sorry, the forward push button which is 3.0 Press forward, but nothing happened We realize why nothing happened because our overload is also normally closed on field So we need to check it whilst we are doing the simulation So I have to go to 3.3 and then energize 3.3 as well Okay, so now with 3.2 closed which is our stop close, our overload close, and then the none of the contactors also picked. We have our conditions or okay, and it's always only waiting for our start or our forward push button to be pressed for it to start. So now I go back to 3.3 .3 and I push on the forward. Okay, bingo. We can see our forward drive is running, and then when I on tick again remember it's a momentary switch so when you, when you tick you need to untick so we can see that it's holding on it's latching now if i want to run the reverse let's say for instance the operator becomes a bit confused and then choose to press the reverse push button whilst the forward is running let's see what happens so we go to i3.1 and then i take it so we can see that this section of our code is energized but here is broken meaning that our forward contact has already energized so our what we term as our interlock is working so we, there's no way current can flow from this section to the reverse contactor so i can only start the reverse when i stop and then start the reverse so now i can untick the reverse which is 3.1 and now press the stop push button Immediately I press the stop push button, the forward stops, and now I can start the reverse. So 3.1, and then we can see the reverse working. Okay, so basically this is how forward and then reverse logic is implemented in step 7. Alright, so I can untick this section also, and then now I can press the stop, which is 3.2, to also stop okay so we can see that right now our system is working perfectly and then we've been able to implement a forward reverse in step 7. viewers this brings us to the end of the implementation of forward reverse in ob1 thank you for watching please subscribe and like see you in the next video bye bye